If you're incorporating and using drone footage in your videos, now that doesn't matter if it's landscape stuff that you're shooting, if you're actually being tracked by the drone, or you're just cutting, hey, what's going on? To you in the actual videos, the drone is part of the story, then the footage can look very different. This video is going to show you how you can stop all of those screw ups and make your footage look more or less the exact same, whether that's in the drone or on the camera. Hey, how are you doing? It's Vic Barry. If there's one tip in this video that you absolutely have to take away, have the white balance the same on the camera as it is on the drone. Manual white balance, dial it in, let's say 5500 on the camera here, do the exact same on the drone. In this case, it's the DJI Mini 3 Pro 5500. Now you're starting at least with an equal playing field because auto white balance can screw things up all over the place. And that's the one thing you don't want. The next step here is to match the exposure and match the color so things look as kind of bright and the colors match. Now, if you've completely screwed up the white balance, don't worry, we can actually try and do a good job of matching the color. Now, this might sound really involved, really, really difficult. It's not. If you think you can't do it, go with me here. I'm telling you, you can. Doesn't matter what the software is. I'm using Premiere Pro, but you could be using DaVinci Resolve, you could be using Final Cut, whatever. The ideas here are the exact same. The things just might be in different places. So you'll just have to find them. First step here is we need to have our scopes enabled. In Premiere Pro, you need to have window and Lumetri scopes enabled. If you don't see those, then that's how you get them. So if we look here really quickly, we can see the scopes are gonna change. So this is the actual clip that we wanna match with this. So. This is called our Luma. This is how bright the picture is. So that's the exposure. Essentially, we're going to look at this first. So we can see mine here is like at 80 on the talking head part. And this is the actual part that we're going to use to lead the grade and lead the correction and lead how it all looks. So we're going to work off of this one. So that's like at 80 brightness. Anything above 100, it's lost. Anything underneath zero, it's lost. Data is gone, killed, <coughs> gone. It's a bit extreme, Vic, isn't it? Yeah. We go back here. We can see, okay, we're down around 60 to 50. So the first step here is to actually start bringing all of this up. Let's bring it up to the 80, 90 mark. So we can now see, okay, we're kind of similar brightness. We can move our highlights around. We can bring our shadows up and down a little bit. So you get stuff that is pretty close to what's there. I can bring the blacks down to bring this down here, that's also the shadows. So we can move those up and down. Now move those sliders around until you get something that you can eyeball. And then the scopes are kind of giving you the same thing. You're like, okay, that's as bright as that. Now, as you can see on this clip, the colors are very different. And that's the next step. The scopes, again, don't lie. So we want to look at this one here. This is the RGB parade. This is how the colors look on the drone footage. So if you don't see that, just make sure the parade type is set to RGB. And then you'll see the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. Simple, right? Not complicated at all, I told you. Now, if we look at here, we can see, okay, so it's going, the blues are up here, then the greens, then the reds. Ugh. So that's not balanced because once all of these are kind of balanced along the top or they all look kind of somewhat level, then that means they're balanced, white balance. Remember we talked about that? Okay, so we can start moving the white balance around here and very quickly we can see we can kind of get that ladder effect. Now, if we jump over here, you're like, okay, we're getting there slowly but surely. Now we can put on a comparison view. If you don't see that, then all you gotta do is select the plus symbol here and go for it. Now we want our timeline here and this is where we can actually use to compare. So we can see the blues here are a little bit different but the brightness as we fixed in the last part, it's looking good. Now, here's the thing. We've started messing with our white balance and as we can see, you can only do so much. No, looking at that, that's not too bad. And that's kind of eyeballing it. But if we look here, let's turn off the comparison view. We can see we've got that ladder effect. So we got to bring the greens down another bit and then we got to bring the reds down another bit there. And it's predominantly kind of in the skies and the midtones, the highlights in the midtones is where we're going to work at. So what we got to do then, see, this is real easy, is jump into something called curves. Now this is real big boy and big girl stuff. It's not really, you'll be fine. All we gotta do, let's jump into a red. Let's put a little tick here, a little click here, and a little click there. 
All we gotta do is start moving these around. So we can see here, we're bringing down the red. Look at this, see? We're bringing it down. So we're starting to ladder it a little bit more than what it was. Let's jump into the greens. Again, click, click, click. All we're doing here really is an S curve. We're bringing this down to be slightly below the blue and we can go up here as well to the final little dot and we can start moving that down another bit. So we can see here, okay, our blues are fine. That's, that's the base as it were. The greens are kind of below the blues, but the reds need to come down just a little bit more. So let's go up to the final dot here and let's bring that down. And as you can see, we're starting to make pretty good inroads. See the blues? Let's take a look at the comparison view here again. And as you can see, we're nearly there, right? And then it's a case of just starting to move the sliders around and the curves around another bit until you get it absolutely matched. And you can also go back to your creative tab here. You can start bringing up your saturation a little bit to make it a little bit more saturated. This yoke over here, this is a vector scope. That line is for skin tones, not important in this style when we're doing drone footage. But if you look at it, if it's out here, it's too saturated. So let's look at the clip here. Let's look at the clip there. So it's kind of as, as colorful and might be just a little bit too much. So we can bring this down and we can type it in. Let's go with 130 maybe. Uh, let's go with 120. And now we're starting to really match this. If you want to make things even more detailed, you can rock back into the curves. You can go to your hue saturation curves. You could highlight, we say, a particular uh, hue here. We can spread these out a little bit. And then if we drag it up or down, we're making things a little bit more saturated or not. So that's it. All you gotta do is start moving these things around just a tad. And again, we can move these left, we can move them right. And we can see moving this back a little bit left here, we're more or less nailing those blues. So we've gone from something that's completely distracting to the viewer to something that's actually, okay, yeah, this all looks like it's kind of the same shot. Now, there is one last tip here on this color matching stuff. And whites really need to be white. But when you're moving things around, whites can suddenly not be white. Hue saturation curves. Let's click our clip. Let's go all the way down. Luma versus Sat. So this is a very subtle change. But basically, everything here that's supposed to be white, should now be white. There's no kind of weird cast on it. And then for one final move about, we can start moving this back and forth just a little bit. Also, if there's a little bit too much green, you can push it to the pinks, the magentas. But as you can see here, we've kind of achieved that ladder effect. So this one is going down, this one is going down, this one is going down on the actual talking head clip. And that's now doing the same. So they're pretty matched up. Now, can you use the same kind of color grade and correction on all of your drone clips? Can you just copy paste them? Is that a door opening? Um, you can and you can't, right? So I'm in here in the effects controls on the actual main clip that we've just fixed. I'm gonna control and see your command, see if you're on the Mac. And I'm gonna drop it onto this footage and ugh, it kind of works, it doesn't work. I'm gonna press auto here and that kind of gives us a base as it were, but the brightness, the exposure isn't great. So again, it's rinse and repeat. You mightn't have to make as many changes as the last one because the colors are kind of around where they should be, but you might have to look at the white balance because again, if you haven't matched the white balance in cameras, that's where it all falls down. But now you know how to do it. What about a cheat code though? If you've screwed everything up or if this is a bit of a mind melt and you're like, ah, is there another way to do it? There kind of is. And it's something that we say you could drop a lot on, by the way. Let's uh, drop one of my cinematic summer collection lots on here, see what it does. Looks okay. So we just need to fix the shadows, the exposure, like literally that's how many clips that we've got. Now, obviously that's not going to match this. For the point that I'm trying to make here is you've got a piece of footage here and whatever grade you've put on it or whatever way it's screwed up, it looks a bit different. So if it looks a bit different, make it different. And the way you make it different and a proper cinematic sequence is drop black bars on top of it. The way you do that 
Let's go with a new adjustment layer. Let's drop it over these here. And then what we want to do is go to effects, go to crop, drop crop in, effects controls. Let's go down until we see our crop parameters. Top is 12%, bottom is 12%. Boom, black bars, cinema. Now that sequence there, and if you put music and sound effects on it, by the way, link in the description for Epidemic Sound for free music and free sound effects, then that differentiates it from your whole footage and it might just get you out of jail if things are really, really bad. But if things are really, really, really bad, then mm, there is something else that's probably even more important than this. And that's how to actually incorporate drone footage directly into your videos. So they're not a distraction to the audience. So it actually helps tell the story. If you want to know how to do that, and I know you do, there's a video there that'll tell you exactly what you need to do.